Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the VRMs of the Gigabyte Aorus Z270 Gaming 7 motherboard. And this is a sort of upper mid-range or lower high-end motherboard, depending on how you look at the price point, as it is priced at around $240 if you want to go buy it. So it is not cheap, but it does pack a lot of features, and of course, we will see how good the VRMs are right here, right now. But before the VRM analysis, this coverage is brought to you by CyberPower PC and their CyberXL gaming PC with an invertible motherboard tray layout and some Ryzen branding in the future, maybe. <laughs> Links in the description below for more information. So, starting off with the main VRMs on this motherboard, we have the V-Core located right over here. And it is a rather odd layout, but it is in fact all V-Core, as was verified by with a digital multimeter. And under this, you find the uh, IGPU VRM. So I'll just write that down, IGPU. And that is three phases, and the V-Core is eight. Over here, you find the two minor memory, contro memory controller VRMs. So this would be VCCIO and VCCSA. Both are controlled by these voltage two voltage controllers right here. Those are Richtech RT8120s, and they are single phase voltage controllers. Very, very basic uh, controllers, to be exact. They're about as budget. Basically, you can't get less features on a voltage controller than one in this sort of eight pin package. However, that does not matter as both of these voltages are very, very minor in terms of both power demands and uh, importance on overclocking as they really only matter a huge amount if you are trying to push excessively high RAM frequencies with very, very tight timings. And we are talking like four DDR4, 4000 and CL13, CL12, CL11 timings. Uh, which is actually achievable on some very, very expensive DDR4 kits um, w get once they are given enough voltage. So for the average user, the, these VRMs basically do not matter at all. For the, you know, extreme overclocker, yes, you, you would want to see something maybe a little better than this. However, unfortunately, we can't get... Well, I can't get any details on the actual components making up to the this sort of group of VRMs, or even how they're arranged, which is why I haven't split them. Because the motherboard's on the other side of the Atlantic, and these inscriptions are impossible to read with how small they are. So, that that's sort of the situation with that VRM over there. Either way, it does not matter a huge amount, as they are very low power, and there's no way you're burning those out even with very high VCCIO and VCCSA voltages. Finally, the last VRM that you really need to care about is the, you know, the RAM, well, yeah, the RAM VRM right over here. And that is another single phase, also controlled by an RT8120 uh, from Richtech. And again, it's, you know, RAM doesn't pull a lot of power. This one is a little bit more important as it will have much more direct impacts on RAM overclocking capabilities as you raise RAM voltage. However, even a single phase is plenty for RAM overclocking in most scenarios. Only at the very, very top end, you know, you're going to start seeing issues if you don't have a... Well, you might not even start seeing issues. You, you would see benefits from having, say, a two-phase design or, or something more complicated than just a simple one-phase like we have here. So, now that we know all the VRMs, let's take a more in-depth look at what they're actually made up of. The V-Core and the iGPU VRMs are both controlled by the Intersil 95866, which is a really long name for a voltage controller. Um... Either way, this voltage controller is a 4 plus 3 phase uh, design. And as such, it becomes rather odd that the V-Core here has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 inductors. The iGPU VRM obviously doesn't have any issues as it only has 1, 2, 3. So that 3 phase setup right there trans is you know exactly proportional to how many phases the intercell voltage controller is actually able to put out. Uh, for that section of the VRM. So the V-Core has to use some kind of doubling scheme or it has to be cramming more inductors per phase than there are phases. 
Uh, luckily, uh, Gigabyte chose to do the right thing, and we do actually have eight phases. However, I am not sure how exactly they are all controlled, as the motherboard is on the other side of the Atlantic for me, and we can't get data sheets for these ICs uh, in the VRM right here. And also, I'm not sure if there should be more of them, because there's only four, and then there's no drivers for the actual iGPU VRM. So this VRM is kind of a mystery to me, with the fact that I can't, you know, get my hands on it and, and measure everything manually. So working long distance, this is an eight phase VRM as far as I can tell, but it, I am not sure how exactly those eight phases are controlled. So in terms of actual power capabilities, it is equal to a eight phase VRM. In terms of, say, voltage regulation, it could be slightly worse than a, well, it, it's definitely worse than a true eight phase, but it won't necessarily be on par with, say, a four phase, depending on if these are actual doublers or if Gigabyte is just choosing to put two phases onto one control signal, which would essentially mean that it has the voltage regulation quality of a four phase. Um, but both are actually completely fine, as KB Lake is an extremely low power architecture, and as well as Skylake, and both of these are compatible with the motherboard because it does use the LGA 1151 socket. So, Pretty much regardless of what you put in this motherboard, it's not going to be very, it's not going to be negatively affected by Gigabyte's, you know, uh, interesting eight phase uh, design decisions. However, um, well, unless you start taking the system on LN2, and even on LN2 you should actually be just fine, I think. Unless you're like to aiming to break world records, this VRM really shouldn't be holding you back. Uh, especially not in terms of power capabilities, because the MOSFETs in here are Syrah, uh, well, S-I-R-A, and that is actually how it's done in the data sheet. 18 DPs for the high side, which are not super high-end MOSFETs, but they are completely adequate for the application here especially with how many phases Gigabyte opted for. And this one down here is a Syra, and yep, that, that same I thing, uh, 12 DP. So both of these MOSFETs are made by Vichet, and with a VRM, you know, predicted operating setup of 125 degrees centigrade, 500 kilohertz switching frequency, which no motherboard, as far as I'm concerned, has ever shipped at. Um, so 500 kilohertz is sort of a safety feature from my side t for VRM ratings because that 500 kilohertz makes me slightly underestimate the power capabilities. Same goes for that 125 degree figure, uh, as this VRM is an eight phase providing very little current with a massive aluminum heatsink on top of it. This VRM really shouldn't be getting particularly hot unless you have abysmal case airflow. So again. 125 degrees, 500 kilohertz, both sort of overkill ratings. My voltage rating is going to be 1.5 volts, uh, which is slightly above what you want to be running KB Lake or Skylake at for 24-7 usage, as both are recommended to run about 1.4, 1.45, depending on who you ask. Um, so with these expected operating se settings, this 8-phase VRM right here is should be capable of delivering 256 amps, straight to the CPU. So, no issues. Absolutely no issues, as KB Lake and Skylake both have a sub-100 watt TDP, and even when overclocked, uh, they will not be pulling much over 200 watts on to the 8-pin. So that's before conversion loss on the VRM. So really, this 256 amp figure is a very nice margin of overkill from Gigabyte. Uh, you'd probably have to put the system on LN2 and do something, force the VRM to actually hit 125 degrees, that's the other issue here, and then you might be able to actually, you know, damage this VRM. Otherwise, yeah, th this is perfectly fine with how Gigabyte designed it. So, taking those same running parameters for the iGPU, which, you know, I, I have no idea how to rate an iGPU because I doubt anybody who 
who has this motherboard is going to use the iGPU. Like, I really, really hope you're not using the iGPU if you have this motherboard for anything more than, like, say, checking that your main GPU works or, or something like that. You really shouldn't be using an iGPU on a $240, $240 motherboard. You really should have a discrete uh, GPU. And if you have a discrete GPU, well, this VRM is completely irrelevant to you. But on the off chance that you don't have a discrete GPU, well, I have good news for you. These MOSFETs are exactly the same as the ones in the V-Core. So, you know, again, Syrah 18 DPs for the high side, Syrah 12 DPs for the low side, and a combined current throughput of 96 amps across those three phases. Again, using those same running parameters. So, moving on, onto the RAM VRM. This is slightly different in terms of MOSFET selection. This runs only Syrah 12s. So, Syrah 12 high sides, Syrah 12 low sides, and there's two low side FETs inside the VRM, which is mostly an efficiency feature, as the low side can significantly uh, outpower the high side. Either way, this VRM right here delivers a maximum of 56 amps at, again, that same running spec of 125 degrees, 500 kilohertz, and 1.5 volts. Uh, with, the v with the RAM VRM, that 125 degrees figure might be a little bit more achievable, but 56 amps is not achievable with DDR4 memory modules. Just no way. Uh, DDR4 runs, again, extremely low power. We are talking, say, about 4 watts per stick. Even when overclocked, they will not be pulling a significant amount of power, even if completely maxed out. And by completely maxed out, I mean 2 volts uh, in, you know, RAM voltage and 4000 megahertz frequency CL12, say, which is, again, achievable on very high-end kits you will not be getting anywhere near to that 56 amp, 6 amp figure. So, no complaints about that VRM from me either. And overall, uh, Gigabyte has done, done well on this VRM. I'd, I'd love to know how those eight phases are actually controlled. Um, and I might have, I have a slight suspicion that maybe these two drivers aren't actually part of the vCore VRM. But the problem is there's also two drivers sitting in the iGPU VRM and you've got to start questioning where are the iGPU drivers because two of them can't drive three phases. There's no way that's working. So, yeah. I, I'd really love to know the specifics of how the VRM is exactly controlled, but as of right now, uh, cur current throughput-wise, no complaints on any of the major VRMs on the motherboard. Voltage regulation-wise, it's always nice to see a true 8 phase, but then again, true 8 phases are extraordinarily expensive and very, very rare as a side effect of that. So, no real complaints that Gigabyte hasn't opted for one here, especially since it's probably completely unnecessary with the target audience for this motherboard, which is gamers, who wouldn't really benefit from a true 8 phase design anyway. One last thing to note about this motherboard is you do have voltage read points buried right under the sort of in that area. There are voltage read points for all the voltages on this motherboard, so V-Core, RAM voltage, uh, VCCIO, VCCSA, and every other voltage you could possibly need when overclocking a KB Lake or Skylake CPU inside it put into this motherboard. And you do also get onboard buttons, so it does have some of the overclocking goodies, not necessarily all of them, um, but yeah. This motherboard wouldn't let you down, unless unless you probably went on LN2. I think even for dry ice, you would be fine using this motherboard. So, that wraps this up. Uh, there is a full review of this motherboard up on the Gamers Nexus website. Consider donating to the Gamers Nexus Patreon to support what we do here. And see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.